Good afternoon. Also, good morning to colleagues from Europe and Asia. First of all, I would like to thank to colleagues from Ecosystem Restoration Thematic Group uh, within CEM for inviting me and providing opportunity to, um, to share some of my work uh, on bioenergy and landscape restoration in Indonesia. Uh, I am also involved in uh, one of the um, uh, thematic group called Forest Ecosystems uh, Specialist Group within CEM. Uh, where we highlight the uh, role of forest uh, for climate change uh, mitigation, uh, ecosystem services, and sustainable development goals. Uh, you are more than welcome to visit uh, our website uh, within CEM. Uh, but this afternoon, I am not C4, Center for International Forestry Research uh, based in Indonesia. Uh, C4 uh, research uh, are um, organized in six thematic areas, um, as you can see here, forest and human well-being, sustainable landscape and food, equal, equal opportunity, gender justice and tenure, climate change, energy and low carbon development, um, value chain finance and investment, and forest management and restoration. My work is very closely related to two thematic areas, uh, climate change, energy, and low carbon development, and forest management and restoration. Uh, forest uh, management and restoration may be of interest to, um, to colleagues uh, here in um, this uh, thematic um, um, group of uh, CEM. So our work on forest management and restoration is uh, uh, focusing on two main areas, um, oh. such as diversified forest management and also forest uh, landscape oh, restoration. Okay. So uh, here are our key priorities uh, within these areas. Uh, we work on approaches and tools for forest conservation, production, restoration, and also um, evaluating institutions, incentive systems, safeguards of uh, uh, safeguards for uh, natural and also restored forest. We also work on large and also uh, medium and small scale planted forest. Uh, we also focus on forest certification schemes and fair and uh, that are fair and effective uh, and, and various aspects such as gender uh, equity tenure related to forest landscape restoration. This uh, afternoon, my focus is on more uh, uh, on our uh, recent work on integrating bioenergy and landscape restoration uh, goals in, um, in Indonesia. Uh, C4 uh, and partners are investigating opportunities to restore uh, degraded land while producing uh, bioenergy and also foods uh, using uh, what we call here climate smart agroforestry methods, basically agro silvo fishery approach on, on, on degraded peatlands uh, um, in, uh, in various islands, uh, mainly in Kalimantan and Sumatra. Uh, as you can see, the, the landscape um, uh, usually burned, uh, call, uh, practice called sonar uh, practice here, so burning in summer and growing some. Um, some agricultural, uh, especially foods, especially paddy. And um, this landscape is being um, transformed to, um, to uh, back to forest uh, and also some agriculture uh, fishing, so yeah, uh, multiple use uh, landscape, I would say. Uh, first of all, um, as uh, you all uh, know and aware of uh, FLR targets and estimated funding required, because uh, here the case we are trying to make is uh, the cost required for restoration can be compensated through the bioenergy plantations or uh, biofuel um, market. So, so different uh, restoration target and priority uh, has a different area of um, the amount of um, uh, land to be restored under those uh, target. Uh, and, uh, and here in right column, as you can see, the 
cost required to uh, to meet those targets so restoration is not um, not uh, cheap so very expensive uh, undertaking and if we use a similar number to estimate it funding required to restore um, uh, Indonesia's uh, 14 million hectare of degraded land uh, uh, may cost over uh, 34 billion uh, dollar US dollar so which is um, which is a huge uh, number as you can imagine uh, in the meantime there is a um, growing interest on uh, on bioenergy that's globally and also in Indonesia um, so the energy demand is uh, increasing so um, international energy agency forecast like 30 percent rise in global energy demand by 2040 but still hundreds of millions of people will left uh, in uh, in 2040 without basic energy services and um, as you know that paris agreement on climate change uh, uh, mentions the transformative uh, change in the energy sector is key to reach uh, the agreement and sustainable development goals uh, or global goals uh, suggest that sustainable development is not possible without access to sustainable energy which is in um, SDG number seven and several governments um, have, almost every government have their own targets related to renewable energy including uh, bioenergy for example uh, indonesia has a target to um, uh, to contribute a reno uh, renewable energy target uh, by 23 percent by 2025 uh, so which is a very ambitious target um, uh, where uh, bioenergy has significant um, role to play and um, there is a potential um, a linkage between bioenergy and restoration goals uh, however the challenge are uh, challenge um, we can hear mostly are whether you, you would like to grow food or um, uh, re uh, keep the landscape for nature conservation or grow bioenergy these are the aspects uh, i will be talking in in this presentation um here this is uh, as you can see the area of degraded land like globally depending on which uh, data and um, and models uh, we use uh, there is a huge discrepancy between those um, those projections so somewhere between uh, um, between uh, one to two million uh, two billion hectare of degraded land uh, is uh, available glo globally that need to be restored uh, by 2030 under SDGs um, and um, bioenergy scenarios various scenarios uh, uh, suggest that uh, we need about 200 to 500 million hectare of land um, for biofuel production so that provides an opportunity to utilize those degraded and underutilized land for biomass production so that um, um, financing required for, um, for landscape restoration can be um, compensated by bioenergy or biofuel plantation and where um, the biomass produced from landscape restoration goals can be utilized by uh, utilized or used for uh, bioenergy production so that's a kind of a win-win um, uh, situation if we manage uh, this uh, appropriately in um, in, in in landscapes uh, uh, this is uh, another linkage as you can see uh, uh, so restoration effort produce a biomass that can be used by bioenergy and the cost related um, to restoration be justified by bioenergy production and but we, where we need to think about uh, uh, environmental so, socio social and economic criteria of sustainability uh, for biofuel production on degraded and marginal land uh, this is uh, the project logic uh, we are currently working in um, in indonesia uh, we are um, planning to restore the degraded land or uh, at least demonstrating models and approaches and tools how the degraded land can be restored to 
to meet uh, international and national goals and commitment, uh, uh, what kind of action that we need to um, do and what are the potential result, outcome and, and impact. So, so basically uh, our suggestion here is um, to work on degraded and underutilized land, what we call marginal land here in Indonesia or critical land, um, Lahan critics. Um, and the uh, action is uh, basically what we are suggesting for our approach, like right uh, trees on right um, landscapes um, uh, using the right uh, business model or um, like production model and respecting uh, local community rights or farmer rights. Um, uh, and also engage private and public uh, investment here. Um, um, uh, to encourage those kind of investment, so um, uh, to restore the landscape and the biomass produce uh, can be utilized for for bio energy, not only for bio energy, but also variety of biomaterials uh, uh, can be produced from um, from the biomass, and it also contributes to multiple ecosystem goods and services um, such as. Um, biodiversity conservation, water regulation, uh, and many more. So if we manage these activities um, well, we may be able to, um, these activities will be uh, help to meet uh, 1.5 degree goal or sustainable development goals. Uh, um, that is our uh, aspiration. Uh, key questions uh, we are working um, here are how can sustainable uh, sustainable bioenergy be developed to avoid food energy environment trilemma? So we don't want to compete the food production and also we don't want to uh, clear the native vegetation for biofuel production. And uh, when we talk like those issues, we need to understand what are the most promising species uh, and to, uh, to achieve efficient bioenergy production from degraded land. So degraded lands are not uh, very easy to work uh, with, uh, um, uh, especially production of uh, biofuel and uh, to make it profitable. And what are the socioeconomic and environmental um, outcomes and also in challenges um, uh, related to bioenergy production on, on, on degraded land. These are the three key questions like we started our work um, um, some five years ago. Uh, uh, and we made um, some progress. Um, sorry, I missed the slide about project location. So that's uh, mostly in Indonesia. Uh, uh, in Kalimantan, uh, Sumatra, and also Java Island, um, uh, we are uh, identif we are working on mostly on, on on degraded land categories. Some of the key project activities are um, uh, reviewing and mapping policies, land availability, suitability, uh, potential productivity, community perceptions, um, those kind of activities we are doing and also establishing the research and demo trial of uh, what kind of tree um, grows on what uh, landscapes. Um, and we are also testing those um, biomass uh, uh, using modern technology by our uh, uh, funder and partner uh, from NIFOS, National Institute of uh, Forest Sciences in, in Korea. Uh, and we are also working on stakeholder engagement capacity building work uh, with local and national partners, uh, universities, uh, community group and, and um, uh, government research institutions. And in the meantime, uh, we are not waiting the results uh, comes uh, until the very end, but we are also working with private sector actors that whatever results are coming, they, they know uh, some initial results and they can start uh, scaling up those um, uh, good uh, practices in, in their own land, uh, then their own landscapes. For example, uh, uh, some of the private companies um, uh, such as Clean Power Indonesia and some mining companies such as Pete Asmin. So they are uh, um, 
trying to replicate the model to restore uh, a landscape uh, uh, bio energy or biomass production in, in, in various landscapes. So uh, our work uh, focus on um, screening the potential of bioenergy production tree species on degraded land. Uh, we looked um, uh, uh, published literature in mostly in Asia and, and, and tropics uh, to see uh, how what species can produce what uh, level of biomass. Uh, uh, and yield and also how it work on different uh, climate and rainfall um, um, zones. Uh, so, so basically that helps us to spatially explicit uh, species suitability model to develop those kind of models. And also we looked at uh, spatial um, assessment uh, of degraded land for biofuel production in Indonesia. So using Ministry of Forestry and Environment data we analyze uh, which uh, species are suitable on, on which um, uh, kind of uh, degraded land and where are those land. Uh, so that's what uh, we are mapping uh, and, um, and, and assessing the potential of uh, uh, biofuel production uh, using um, major species um, such as um, uh, Pongamia pinnata, uh, Calophyllum inophyllum, um, Kaliandra, Glyceridia, those kind of species uh, we are currently assessing. Uh, we also looked uh, for um, land, land owners uh, pers like uh, perceptions um, to use their degraded land for biofuel production. Uh, we we uh, interviewed with them also through the focus group discussion we identified uh, w what is their priorities, uh, whether they are interested to, to convert their degraded land for bioenergy or some other kind of plantations uh, development. So mixed uh, outcomes uh, there. So the people uh, who doesn't have, don't have um, um, risk bearing capacity, they don't have extra income, they want uh, more, uh, traditional um, uh, species, uh, the species uh, uh, wh which has a readily available market, but uh, some other um, farmers uh, who has uh, uh, capacity to take a risk, uh, they have um, extra income from other sources. They are willing to take a risk and uh, work on, um, on new species. That's a very interesting result. Um, similarly, uh, we also tested uh, uh, several tree species on, um, on, on degraded like X burn and degraded land, uh, especially degraded peatland, as you saw earlier the photos. Um, those uh, land uh, are, are um, planted uh, using agro silvo fishery approach. Uh, uh, like uh, what we call paludi culture, so working on wetland um, condition, wet uh, soil conditions uh, to see how different uh, tree uh, species performs um, under different um, different type of degraded um, uh, peatlands. Uh, we also looked uh, um, bamboo as a, as an alternative bioenergy crop uh, and also soil restoration. Um, a very versatile uh, species uh, grows uh, um, super fast uh, and multiple use. You can make so many products from from charcoal to electricity generation, uh, soil conservation, uh, many more. Like um, and when we analyze the fuel content of um, uh, of uh, bamboo uh, biomass, uh, uh, those uh, um, those uh, results suggest that bamboo is uh, uh, very efficient uh, and and compare comparable to other uh, biomass. Uh, we also analyze um, uh, bioenergy and food production on degraded land and uh, also um, net present value compared to different products uh, such as um, especially with uh, compared with agricultural product 
uh, which suggests that uh, growing um, nemplum based uh, biomass uh, and other values uh, suggest much uh, profitable compared to uh, agricultural um, uh, monoculture agricultural uh, farming uh, so and also first uh, few years uh, we can grow um, nemplum with uh, a variety of agricultural crops such as maize uh, peanuts uh, uh, cassava uh, so that uh, until the canopy close, um, we we can have both um, food and um, and um, and also the fuel. Uh, from our uh, work um, here in Indonesia, we came with uh, three very high performing candidates. Uh, if you want to ask, okay, what what are the, the uh, most uh, promising species? Uh, I'm not saying these are the only candidates. We have so many other species uh, in, uh, grows um, well in the tropics, but these three species are uh, very easy to grow, uh, multifunctionality, so produce a variety of uh, goods and services, um, uh, not only bioenergy, but also biomaterials. Um, uh, they all are native to Indonesia and um, meets both uh, bioenergy and restoration um, uh, potential so, so these uh, species uh, we have um, published uh, several uh, uh, interesting um, articles and um, infographs forest news on those species um, i will be more than happy to share those uh, links uh, to this group uh, if you are interested Uh, so these are our uh, very popular uh, forest news articles um, um, in, in C4 website. So restoration belongs to community, power of peatland, uh, Pongamia for biofuel and also land restoration. Um, those kind of, uh, these are uh, becoming very highly shared or highly viewed uh, um, forest news articles. So to, to come to the end, our work uh, suggests uh, like uh, three key findings, uh, um, food, uh, energy, and also environment uh, matters. So um, there is a common myth that uh, there is not enough land on which grow biofuel crops. So currently they a supplant uh, much needed food um, uh, food crops and also environment conservation areas uh, but based on our assessment uh, we see uh, a large uh, amount of degraded and underutilized land is available so we don't need to um, the, the land availability is not an issue for bioenergy uh, plantation uh, similarly, the environmental issues like common myth is bioenergy plantation may destroy native vegetation and lead the bioenergy biodiversity loss. But in fact, uh, our initial findings uh, suggest that uh, well-managed uh, biofuel plantations may support uh, native biodiversity. Uh, you can see our two years old bioenergy plantation, one of the plantations uh, uh, in East Kalimantan has been colonized by birds, uh, butterflies, and various uh, insect uh, uh, species. Uh, so it's becoming like a, a nice uh, natural forest, um, uh, li uh, yeah, nice, um, yeah, naturally grown forest in, in two, three years time. So that's a uh, very interesting. Um, so Another um, uh, issue is fuel or food. So, uh, bioenergy plantation displace food production and increase the food price. Uh, but our work uh, here uh, using agro silvo fishery approach, uh, we are utilizing the degraded um, and burn land for food, uh, energy, and uh, and also um, um, uh, uh, also nature conservation. So that's. Uh, uh, yeah, food and energy can be integrated within um, within a landscape or e e even a plot level. That's uh, uh, our uh, finding. 
so what we see if we manage the bioenergy plantation uh, will uh, manage uh, within within the landscape as i mentioned earlier uh, right uh, kind of tree on right uh, land um, uh, it's it's possible to um, to integrate bioenergy and food production from the same uh, same um, yep. So some of the key messages uh, from uh, from our work uh, here is uh, uh, bioenergy production from degraded land uh, and underutilized land strengthen the economic incentive to uh, to the community groups and smallholder farmers uh, and also private sector uh, investors to undertake restoration efforts. Uh, as highlighted earlier, um, right uh, tree on right land with right business model and respecting uh, community right, what we call so-called 4R approach, um, are, um, are the basic uh, consideration for uh, bioenergy that to boost farm production and support climate and development goals. Um, so potential competition between land and raw materials uh, for other uh, use uh, must be carefully managed. Uh, uh, in some cases uh, where we say this is a degraded land or not used land, but uh, local communities uh, may be using those land for uh, a variety of uses such as uh, cattle grazing or collection of some uh, non-timber forest products. So those uh, things need to be uh, discussed with um, with uh, local actors um, before uh, planning the bioenergy uh, project. Thank you very much for your um, kind attention. If you have any queries, uh, comments, and feedback, please let me know. Uh, I will answer your questions um, uh, during the webinar. Uh, or uh, I would be more than happy to take uh, questions by email um, after the webinar and thank you.